G. Can we start? بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آج خواتین و حضرات ممبرز آف دا میڈیا میں نے آپ کو زحمت دی ہے کیونکہ آپ کے سامنے آج ہم یہ پیش کر رہے ہیں یہ ڈاسیئر یہ ڈاسیئر ہے جس میں مقبوضہ کشمیر میں جو انسانی حقوق کی مسلسل خلاف ورزی ہو رہی ہے اس ڈاسیئر میں اس کا ایک خلاصہ ہے ایک تجزیہ ہے انسانی حقوق کی خلاف ورزی مقبوضہ کشمیر میں کوئی نئی بات نہیں ہے یا کوئی نئی روایت نہیں ہے لیکن پچھلے چھ سالوں میں جب سے بی جے پی کی آر ایس ایس ہندوتوا سوچ کی سرکار دلی پر قابض ہوئی ہے اس نے ایک نئی شدت اختیار کر لی ہے اور آپ دیکھ رہے ہیں کہ وائلیشنز میں مسلسل اضافہ ہوتا چلا جا رہا ہے آج ہم بیٹھے ہیں تو ملٹری سیج کو سات سو انہتر دن بیت چکے ہیں آج کیفیت یہ ہے کہ تقریباً نو لاکھ کے قریب آج بھی ہندوستان کی افواج ان کی بارڈر سیکیورٹی فورس پیرا ملٹری کے جو ان کے حضرات ہیں وہ قابض ہیں وہ مقبوضہ کشمیر پر مسلط ہیں اور جو ان کا رویہ ہے وہ کسی سے پوشیدہ نہیں ہے پہلی ستمبر حریت کے رہنما سید علی گلانی صاحب طویل علالت کے بعد اور ایک عرصہ دراز قید و بند میں رہنے کے بعد وہ اپنے خالق کے حقیقی سے جا ملے ان کا انتقال ہوا آپ نے دیکھا کہ اس انتقال پر ہندوستان کی حکومت افواج کی سوچ کیا تھی ان کے گھر کے تمام راستے بند کر دیے گئے خاردار تار بچھا دیے گئے سری نگر میں کرفیو کا سما تھا ان کی جو جست خاکی ہے ان کے گھر کو گھیرے میں لیا گیا ان کے جست خاکی کو قبضے میں لیا گیا زبردستی چھینا گیا ان کی خواہش کے مطابق اور جو جگہ ان نے متعین کی تھی اپنے دفتانے کی اس کے برعکس انہیں دفن کیا گیا رات کی تاریکی میں جنازے میں ان کی جو فیملی کے ممبرز ہیں عزیز و اقارب ہیں ان کو شامل ہونے کی اجازت نہیں دی گئی اور ایک اس قد اور اس اتنی بڑی شخصیت کا جب وصال ہوتا ہے تو ان کے شیان شان جو ایک بنیادی حق ہے کفن اور دفن کا وہ بھی اس سے محروم رہے یہ کیفیت دیکھ کر میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ ہر کشمیری چاہے وہ مقبوضہ کشمیر میں رہتا ہے چاہے وہ آزاد کشمیر میں ہے چاہے وہ دنیا کے کسی کونے میں ہے اس کا دل ٹہل گیا ہر پاکستانی اس اس افسوسناک واقعے کے بعد جو ہے وہ اس کو بے پناہ کرب میں تھا اور تکلیف ہوئی ہم نے فیصلہ کیا کہ اس وقت جو وہاں کیفیت ہے اور جس قسم کی جس سوچ کی حکومت وہاں غالب ہے ہمیں اپنا کردار ادا کرنا چاہیے اور یہ جو دنیا کی سو کال لارجس ڈیموکریسی کا دعویٰ کرنے والی حکومت ہے اس کا اصلی چہرہ دنیا کے سامنے رکھنا چاہیے اسے بے نقاب کرنا چاہیے لوگوں کو بتانا چاہیے کہ یہ کہتے کیا ہیں اور یہ کرتے کیا ہیں ان کے جو دو اس کا جو ان کا جو دوسرا رخ ہے وہ ہم لوگوں کے سامنے رکھیں اب اس کے لیے وہاں تو آزادانہ ذرائع ہے نہیں رسائی ہے نہیں آپ دیکھ رہے ہیں کہ مسلسل جو کمیونیکیشن بلیک آؤٹ ہے وہ جاری ہے آپ نے دیکھا کہ جو انڈیپینڈنٹ جرنلسٹ ہیں یا آبزرورز ہیں ان کو رسائی نہیں دی جاتی دیو نو ایکسیس 
آپ نے دیکھا کہ حقائق جو ہیں ان کو توڑ موڑ کر پیش کیا جاتا ہے اور دبایا جاتا ہے لوگوں تک مندر عام تک حقائق آنے نہیں دیے جاتے آپ نے دیکھا کہ ہم قسم کی جو بروٹیلٹیز ہیں دے گو ان رپورٹیڈ بائی ڈیزائن پتہ ہے کہ ہو رہا ہے بائی ڈیزائن دے گو ان رپورٹیڈ اب آج کی دنیا میں انسانی حقوق کا پرچار ہوتا ہے اس کو ایک سینٹر جو سینٹر اسٹیج پہ ہے اس کا تذکرہ ہوتا ہے اور انسانی حقوق کو اس انداز میں پامال کرنا میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ نامناسب ہے چنانچہ ہم نے یہ ایک ڈاسیئر آپ کے سامنے رکھا ہے اور آپ دیکھیں گے اس ڈاسیئر میں ایک سی ڈی بھی ہے تاکہ وہ بھی آپ استعمال کر سکتے ہیں آپ کے لیے آسانی ہو جائے گی اور یہ اس کی جو وائڈ ڈسیمنیشن ہے اس میں کارآمد ہوگی یہ بار کوڈ ہے اس کے ذریعے بھی آپ آسانی سے اس کو ڈاؤن لوڈ بھی کر سکتے ہیں اور اس کو اس کا مطالعہ بھی کر سکتے ہیں اب اس کا میں مختصر جائزہ آپ کو پیش کرتا ہوں مختصراً یہ ہے کہ یہ ایک سو اکتیس صفوں پر محیط ہے یہ ڈاسیئر اس کے تین چیپٹرز ہیں ایک چیپٹر جو ہے اس میں تذکرہ ہے جو وار کرائمز ہیں جو ہندوستان کی افواج وہاں کمٹ کر رہی ہیں اور جینوسائڈل ایکٹس جو ہیں جو انڈین آکوپیشن فورسز جو انہوں نے کیے ہوئے ہیں اس کا تذکرہ ہے اس کے دوسرے چیپٹر میں یہ جو آئے دن پروپاگینڈا کیا جاتا تھا کہ یہاں تو سب کچھ نارمل ہے باہر سے چیزیں مسلط کی جاتی ہیں اس میں ذکر کیا گیا ہے کہ کس طرح ان کی حرکتوں سے ان کی پالیسی سے کشمیری نالا ہوئے ہیں اور اب وہ جو ایک انڈیجنس موومنٹ جو ہے ریزسٹنس کی موومنٹ جو ہے وہ جنم لے رہی ہے اس میں آپ کا بھلا ہو جو فالس فلیگ آپریشنس کا تذکرہ ہے اور اس ایک اور چیپٹر جو تیسرا چیپٹر ہے اس میں جو سلامتی کاؤنسل کی قرار دادے ہیں جو روح ہے سارے مسئلے کا ان کو کس طرح پامال کیا جا رہا ہے ان کو کس طرح ان کی نفی کی جا رہی ہے اور انٹرنیشنل لاس ہیومینیٹیرین لاس اور جو اپنا ڈیموگرافک ریسٹرکچرنگ کی ان کی مضمون کوشش ہے کہ ایک مسلم اکثریت علاقے کو اقلیت میں تبدیل کرنا اس میں اس کا ذکر ہے پھر میں یہ بھی کہتا چلوں کہ لوگ کہتے ہیں کہ جی اور جی ایسے ڈاسیئر تو پیش کیے جاتے ہیں یہ تو ایک پروپاگینڈا کا ٹول ہے نہیں آپ جب اس کو دیکھیں گے اور میں آپ سے شیئر کرنا چاہ رہا ہوں کہ اس میں جو حوالے دیے گئے ہیں ایک سو تیرہ حوالے ہیں اس ڈاسیئر میں اور اگر ان حوالوں کا آپ ملاحظہ جب آپ کریں گے تو آپ کو اندازہ ہوگا کہ اس میں پاکستان کی سورسز بہت لمیٹڈ ہیں اکثریت جو ہے مٹیریل اور جو حوالے ہیں جو ریفرنسز ہیں وہ کہاں سے لیے گئے ایک سو تیرہ میں سے چھبیس تو ایسے ہیں جن کا تعلق انٹرنیشنل میڈیا کی اسسمنٹس ہیں اور ان کی اپنی رپورٹنگ ہے اور جس میں ایسے ادارے ہیں جس میں بی بی سی ہے جس میں نیو یارک ٹائمز ہے جس میں گارڈین ہے الجزیرہ ہے پھر اکتالیس حوالے ایسے ہیں جن کی سورس انڈین ہے یہ پاکستانی پروپیگنڈا نہیں ہے یہ انڈین سورس ہے اور اس میں آپ دیکھیں کہ اس میں ہندوستان کا میڈیا کی اس میں ریفرنسز ہیں اور ان کے تھنک ٹینکس گائے بگاہے جو ان کے تھنک ٹینکس کہتے رہے ہیں اس کا تذکرہ ہے اور پھر آپ دیکھیں بتیس حوالے ایسے ہیں جو انٹرنیشنل ہیومن رائٹس آرگنائزیشن سے جن کا تعلق ہے اور آرگنائزیشن کون سی ایمنسٹی انٹرنیشنل ہے ہیومن رائٹس واچ ہے اور اس قسم کی جو جو امپورٹنٹ آرگنائزیشن ہیں ان کا تذکرہ ہے پاکستان کے جو حوالے ہیں وہ صرف چودہ ہیں ایک سو تیرہ میں سے تو واٹ آئی ایم سینگ از کہ یہ یہ بڑی محنت سے ایک کریڈبل ڈاکومنٹ ہے بنایا گیا ہے جو ہم آپ سے شیئر کرنا چاہ رہے ہیں اب اس میں پندرہ آڈیو انٹرسیپٹس ہیں آف دی انڈین آکوپیشن فورسز ان کی گفتگو ہے وہ سنائی بھی جائے گی آپ دیکھ بھی لیں گے اور دس کے قریب کلپس ہیں ویڈیو جو کہ آن گراؤنڈ رپورٹس ہیں جو انٹرنیشنل میڈیا کی مرتب کی ہوئی رپورٹس ہیں ان کا حوالہ ہے تین ہزار چار سو بتیس کیسز ہیں آف وار کرائمس جن کو پیش کیا گیا ہے ایک ہزار ایک سو اٹھائیس 
उन लोगों की निशानदेही की गई है जो इन वॉर क्राइम्स को मुरतब करने में डायरेक्टली मुलविस हैं और ये मामूली लोग नहीं हैं इसमें एक मेजर जनरल लेवल का ऑफिसर है इसमें कम से कम पांच ब्रिगेडियर्स हैं इसमें चार आई हैं सात डी हैं एक कर्नल्स हैं और 188 के करीब मेजर्स और कैप्टन्स हैं ये और फिर इसके साथ साथ 118 यूनिट्स का तस्करा किया गया है वो यूनिट जो इन इंसानी हकूक को पामाल करने में डायरेक्टली खुद मुलविस रहे हैं और इन्वॉल्व रहे हैं अब जब आप इसको एग्जामिन करेंगे तो आप देखेंगे हम किस्म की अट्रॉसिटीज़ का इसमें जिक्र है मावरा अदालत कत्ल जिसको आप एक्स्ट्रा जुडिशल किलिंग्स कहते हैं आर्बिट्री अरेस्ट हैं टॉर्चर है पेलेट गन इंजरीज का आप सुनते रहे हैं आप लिखते भी रहे हैं उसके हकाइक हैं रेप एंड यू नो वायलेटिंग यू नो जो खातन की बेहरमती हुई है उसका जिक्र है और फिर एक लाख के ज़्यादा ऐसे केसेस है बच्चों के जो कि इनकी हरकतों की वजह से इनके जुल्म और बरबरीत की वजह से यतीम हुए अमलाक हैं जिनको दानिशा तौर पर नुकसान पहुँचाया गया डिस्ट्रॉय किया गया एक लाख से तो ज़्यादा ऐसी अमलाक का तस्करा है जो कि कॉटन एंड सर्च ऑपरेशन में जिनको जलाया गया जिनको गिराया गया और लोगों को नुकसान पहुँचाया गया इरिफ्यूटबल एविडेंस की बुनियाद पर आ, जो फॉल्स फ्लैग ऑपरेशन हैं फेक इनकाउंटर्स किस तरह किए जाते हैं पाकिस्तान को बदनाम करने के लिए मलाइन किस तरह किया जाता है और इसके साथ साथ किस तरह असला प्लांट किया जाता है रखा जाता है मासूम लोगों पर और फिर उनको मनसूब किया जाता है क्योंकि ये ए, ए, किसी के आलाकार बने हुए हैं ताकि जो रेजिस्टेंस पीसफुल रेजिस्टेंस पॉलिटिकल मूवमेंट है कश्मीरियों की उसको हार्म किया जाए उसको नुकसान पहुंचाया जाए ये इनका ये एक पूरा एक डिज़ाइन है और इस डॉसियर में हमने उस डिज़ाइन को बेनकाब करने की एक दयानत दराना कोशिश की है अब मैं दरख्वास्त करूँगा हमारे जो स्पोक्स पर्सन है आसम इफ्तार साहब ये इस डॉसियर का एक खुलासा एक जिस्ट आपके सामने रखते हैं आसिम थैंक यू फॉरन मिनिस्टर लेडीज एंड जेंटमैन एज द फॉरन मिनिस्टर हैज सेड द स्केल ऑफ वॉर क्राइम्स एंड एट्रॉसिटीज एंड इंडियन ह्यूमन राइट्स वायलेशन इन द इंडियन इलीगली ऑक्यूपाइड जम्मू एंड कश्मीर आर सो ग्रेट दैट देर इज अ ग्रेट नीड to make the world more aware of it and for the world to take more action and do more to bring an end to this series of grave human rights violations in indian occupied jammu and kashmir this dossier is a step in that direction and i shall present from this dossier some details of indian war crimes and human rights violations and incriminating evidence related to indian fake encounters and false flag operations firstly the genocidal acts while there are innumerable accounts of these barbaric acts testimonies of 1747 victims since 2014 have been included in the dossier I invite you to listen to this audio clip from July 2020 wherein two Indian army officers were heard discussing about torture of 40 innocent Kashmiris which resulted in the death of two Kashmiris while locals were threatened throughout night raids to prevent them from raising their voice basic thing was jo 40 bande जो खुदाई हुई है छब्बीस हजार में लास्ट फिफ्टी डेज एंड तो अब डर तो पैदा होगा अभी तक तो इनको इन्होंने देखा नहीं था और क्या कर सकती हाँ 
तो अभी फौज में क्या कर सकता है फौज का ताकत देख लिया इन्होंने जिन्होंने भी देखा नहीं था समथिंग हैपन उठाने एंड पुलिस वाले भी सारे थे तो उन्होंने भी गर्म कर रखा था कि अगर किसी ने कुछ मुंह फालतू में मुंह खोला रात को आएंगे एंड फौज भी आ रखी है Now coming to mass graves which is another tragic aspect of the situation in IIOJK 8652 unidentified mass graves have been discovered in 89 villages of six districts of occupied Kashmir investigations revealed that 154 graves had two bodies while 23 graves had up to 17 bodies each New York Times reported that 574 persons buried in mass graves as foreigners were identified as residents of IIOJK while indian government continued to deny requests for the dna testing of the bodies 17 bodies were found in a grave at kanener kalaras graveyard of kupwara now these were all members of a family who were killed when the indian forces blasted their house using explosives this video clip that we are going to show you is of mr ata muhammad a grave digger of district baramula who is testifying burial of unidentified dead bodies in several graveyards ata muhammad 68 years of age grave digger and caretaker at jehel bimiar in baramula district testified to burying 203 bodies on a hillside adjacent to the Jhelum River between 2002 to 2006 it was in 2003 when he was forced to bury two mutilated bodies killed in fake encounter by indian forces khoon saaf kiya hoton se aankhon se naak se baal iske saaf kiye chehra iska maine samne laya muh ka aur khoon uluda tha mere kapde bhi bhare gaye जिसम भी भरा गया तो मैंने इसको दफने जनाजा किया तो दफना दिया दो हजार दो से तब से फिर दिन को भी आते थे चार बजे भी आते थे रात के ग्यारह बजे भी आते थे कोई दिनों में हमको टाइम नहीं मिलता था वहाँ डेड बॉडी पड़ी रहती थी एक को दफन करते पीछे से और चार आ जाती थी इतना भी हुआ बेदर्दी से मारा है बेदर्दी बहुत बेदर्दी से मारा है हम बोलते हैं भाई कौन आदमी है ये ऊपर बात Ata Muhammad stated that the bodies he had buried appeared in his nightmares each in graphic and gruesome detail Bas wo hi scene aa jata hai hamare samne khoon hai kafan pehna hai khoon chal raha hai khoon bah raha hai kaan se bah raha hai chhati se bah raha hai tang se bah raha hai khoon chal raha hai Inki na shakal inki jawani inka chehra dekh kar humko neend bhi nahi aati thi very tragic indeed let me move on to torture in custody indian occupation forces have for long used torture as a tool of coercion since 2014 around 30000 people have been subjected to worst kind of torture investigations revealed that indian occupation forces have established 239 torture cells most of which are located in north kashmir with 64 in baramula and 53 in kashmir in srinagar testimonies of 432 victims have revealed that 231 of them were electrocuted 70 were burnt and 169 were rolled over by heavy wooden or iron logs while bodies of 12 victims were slit this is confirmed by this video of nazir ahmed sheikh whose legs were cut by 14 dogra regiment army is a sada regiment dogra मेजर मुल्तानी तो पत् तुल्स बन गुस बह आर्मी सेंटर तत टर्चर तो इस कलम सल सेंटर वो अत रूल तुल कर रूल मे पे उंज चोर तट जंग दुन वन जो पे कट अगर मे सूत जुलम आ कर पत् कर्मेंट कह तंसाफ या कह तीज या कह हिसाब मेस अयाल स Let me move now to another serious issue which is suspected use of chemical weapons. In sheer dis- desperation from 2017 onwards the occupation forces have possibly resorted to use of chemical weapons. 37 Kashmiris have been burnt alive while their bodies were completely beyond recognition. 
On 26 June 2020, Indian Occupation Forces carried out a cordon and search operation in Tral area of District Pulwama, in which they destroyed 18 houses and burnt three youth apparently by using chemical weapons, which deshaped their bodies. Now we're going to show you a video, but let me forewarn you since it has graphic content. That is most traumatic. As you know, use of chemical weapons is in complete contravention of Chemical Weapons Convention, and it necessitates international investigation. Let me now move to violence against women and children. The Indian Occupation Forces have raped or molested more than 3,850 women and killed over 650, besides victimizing numerous minors since 2014. On 14th October 2019, it was admitted by the administration of occupied Kashmir in the Indian Supreme Court that 144 children had been detained in August and September alone of 2019. The youngest one was just nine years old. As evidence, please listen to one of the audio conversations of September 2020, wherein Indian officers can be heard discussing the arrest and torture of two girls, all in knowledge of the brigade commander. Listen to this. Hello. Yahin? Yes, Mr. Bull. Now there is some important interrogation going on. We are cross-questioning both of them. Okay? Both the girls. No, 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 no. Both the girls only. We are grilling both of them as of now. And father, we yet to come inside. Father has been kept up. Hey, look, Jai, yaar, kyun, kyun pura detail abhi reveal karwa raha hai? Ab mat kar, yaar, thoda dicey hai, mat kar. There are lot of things which are related, na, yaar. People are monitoring it from outside also. Hey, na, commander ko maine brief kiya hua hai. Ha, commander ko maine brief kiya hua hai. Recommended that abhi isko thoda sa low key pe rak, because thoda. No, don't, don't, don't tell anybody. I know, so it is better we keep it as low. I have commander ko brief kiya hua hai. I have already briefed the commander. So, to commander se puch le request hai abhi thoda sa ruk ja. Now, in, a, in another instance, a 16-year-old girl who was raped by the occupation forces narrates the horrific details of the incident. Please watch this video. One young girl did decide to speak out. She was picked up from school, still wearing her uniform, and accused of aiding militants. Another serious concern is enforced disappearances and related question of half widows. According to the Guardian, the number of enforced disappearances ranges from 8,000 to 10,000, while more than 2,500 women whose husbands are enforced disappeared, considered as half widows, are living in a state of distress. 
you can witness this video clip where a young girl reveals and forced disappearance of her father on 21st of August 2015. 21 August 2015, my father was arrested. My mother was arrested on 5 November 2012. Then, for a few months, my father was here in the house, then arrested. Then, he was left alone, then arrested. But, in 2015, he was never left alone. If one person is finished, then the other person is left alone. There are many problems. बहुत सारी मुश्किलात आते हैं मैं टेबिंग काम करती हूँ थोड़ा सा कमाती हूँ इसमें से तो अपने बहन भाइयों को स्कूल पढ़ाती हूँ और अनदर डायमेंशन ऑफ़ द इलीगल ऑक्यूपेशन इस द यूज़ ऑफ़ पेलेट गन्स सिंस 2014 इंडियन ऑक्यूपेशन फोर्सेस हैव किल्ड 120 ब्लाइंडेड 1,253 इंक्� and seriously injured over 15,000 Kashmiris by using pellet guns. These brutal acts were amply substantiated by a comprehensive report of the Amnesty International covering testimonies of 88 pellet victims. This heartbreaking video shows the suffering of a two-year-old Hiba Nisar, resident of Shopian, who was hit by pellets. And unfortunately, this little girl also lost her eyesight forever. निश्चित मिसाल भी क्या निश्चित सॉरी मिसाल भी मैं शुरू से जनों में स्क्रीन मार्जेस गुई वो सही थी अमर कर भी देश नस्मास मैं चलो मैं तो ये लोग रावत से एक बाइज सुबह सात बाइज है तो मेरे को मैं तो आवाम जामा ये तो उस त्योता उसे मैं तो दोन अजानों से ये बनो उस बात से नहीं चाहिए अंदर कहीं मार सांग कर भाई चौकर सार सार दर्ज में से मैं त्रेश मैं थाई में मैं से थोपो कि बनो उस ओश बेल लेज में से सास बेल लेज में से उल्टे मैं करता तो क्यों अथम थोड़ा गली नहीं शुरू से अंदर में दरवाज खोल तो तो मैं हंस गया मतलब आठ साल में ज़ुत्रे बेर में निकलते मतलब ज़ुत्रे आठ साल मगर ऐसे मिसल कराते हैं नहीं उसे जो मुझे खून मिल चला पर मतलब ओश की वो जो मिस कहर खून है ऐसे साल वो खून को मिस मतलब यहाँ पर भूत कोई मिस बेर खून से अब ये तो आठ बार ना मिसाल से उसको लोगों तो रखवात हैरवाइड कोरियस रहा या बाद बार तो कोई मिस दो इम्स और जरी एम तो कोरियस पे आलर्ट। Let me move now to the question of collective punishment. Cordon and surge operations are tool of subjecting Kashmiris to collective punishment. Since 2014, around 15,500 such operations have been carried out, during which occupying forces have destroyed around 6,500 properties of Kashmiris. These properties are burned with the consent of the central government to break the will of the Kashmiris. In an audio conversation from 16th of February 2019, Indian army officials can be heard talking about orders by PM Modi, giving a free hand to the forces, and this led to burning of 35 villages in Srinagar. आज मोदी जी बोल दिया खुली सावधानता जवानों को जब चाहे जब ठोक दो एक एक खून के कतरे का हिसाब लिया जाएगा अच्छी गाड़ी चला दिया आज जम्मू में बैटी शिवलिंग की तो जनता को बता दिया ना पैंतीस गांव में वे नगर में जितने पैंतीस गांव खत्म करने के लिए बता देगा पैंतीस गांव खत्म कर दो बोलो खत्म कर दो भाई बोलो दैट शोज़ द इम्पुनिटी विद व्हिच दे आर ऑपरेटिंग occupying forces also use Kashmiri women and children as human shields during encounters making them sleep at military camps forcing them to dig minefields and tying youth with military jeeps one such example i am sure you remember was of farooq ahmed dar resident of badgam who was tied to an army vehicle by major nitin gagoi of 53 rashtriya rifles Instead of punishment, this officer was conferred with 
Commendation Medal on 22nd of May 2017. <laughs> Next, let me uh, focus on the draconian laws which have been used by the Indian occupation to perpetuate its illegal occupation in IIOJK. Six draconian laws empower Indian occupation forces to declare anyone as a terrorist and arbitrarily detain without any charge for a period up to seven years. The Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights Report of 2018 states that special laws have created structures that obstruct the normal course of law, impede accountability, and jeopardize the right to remedy for victims of human rights violations. Military siege. Mr. Modi's fascist regime continues to obliterate indigenous Kashmiri identity based on differences in religion, ethnicity, culture, and political views. Post 5th August 2019, Indian apartheid has translated into almost 10,000 cordon and search operations and more than 14,000 arrests. A fact-finding team reported that over 13,000 children have been detained since 5th of August 2019. Please watch this video clip. <laughs> So forces feel very angry when they see a young Kashmiri boy. It has to be a stone pelter or some sort of an anti-social, undesirable. Detail parents ko jaake jail ke bahar list mein dekhna padta hai. Tab unhe pata lagta hai ki kya halat hai unke bache kaun si jail mein. हमें वो माये भी मिली जिनके बच्चों को छोड़ने के लिए उनसे पैसे की मांग की गई। मैक्सिमम आठ बजे तक घर की लाइटें बंद होंगी। ये छोटी बच्ची जो पढ़ाई कर रही थी रात के आठ बजे से ज़्यादा टाइम हो गया था उसके घर पहुँचे और उसके साथ परिवार की कि उसकी माँ ने उसको बचाया और ये दिन उसके बाप और भाई को पकड़ लिया। किस तरीके से जब वो लड़कियाँ जिन्होंने नकाब डाला हुआ होता है वो ड्यूटी के लिए आ रही होती हैं वो रास्ते में आर्मी उनका नकाब छीनती है उनके साथ पत्थर से उनकी होती है। So what I can say is that an Indian variant of genocide is happening in Kashmir। और सभी सिर्फ एक ही बात कहते हैं हमें आजादी चाहिए। Indeed, that's an Indian variant of genocide. Uh, another serious concern is about use of snipers and cluster ammunition. Ceasefire violations since 2014 had resulted 198 deaths and 1,049 injuries. Indian military also used snipers and cluster munition to target innocent Kashmiris living along the line of control. 16 innocent Kashmiris have been killed by Indian snipers and accounts of 10 victims have been included in this dossier. One of them is nine years old Ayan Zahid, resident of Kotli, 
who was killed by Indian sniper on 18th February 2019 while he was playing outside his house. In July 2019, India deliberately targeted, targeted 14 villages along the line of control with cluster ammunition, resulting in four deaths and 14 injuries, which was confirmed by forensic reports. In June 2020, British MP Steve Baker urged UK government to investigate use of cluster ammunition by inspecting the sites and the evidence pro provided by Pakistan. Ladies and gentlemen, now I shall talk about the Kashmir Freedom Movement and Indian false flag operations. Kashmir Freedom Movement <clears throat> has a peaceful and indigenous character, but Indian atrocities over the years have forced the educated youth to pick up arms as an instrument of last resort. The data on slide reflects that 72 martyred since 2016, including 10 who were MPhils and PhDs, 15 master's degree holders, and 47 graduates. Post 5th August 2019, Mr. Yashwant Sena, ex-Foreign Minister of India, led three visits to occupied Kashmir from the platform of Concerned Citizen Group and released nine reports. The group last visited IIOJK from 5th to 7th of July 2021 and noted the youth was being pushed towards militancy because of the harassment faced by people at the hands of the army personnel. The International Crisis Group report titled Raising Stakes in Kashmir, released in August 2020, has endorsed Kashmir Freedom Movement as an indigenized movement. The report highlights that Indian militarized response to peaceful resistance has completely alienated the youth and gradually pushed them towards an armed insurgency which is exponentially rising and is homegrown with local support. Another serious concern of the international community is about Indian patronage of ISIS. The evidence reflects that India is running five ISIS training camps, out of which one is located at Gulmarg in IIOJK, three are located in Rajasthan, and one in Uttarakhand. The coordinates of these ISIS camps are flashed on the screen. By injecting these state-trained ISIS fighters, India may try to establish linkages of the freedom movement with international terrorism. In order to malign the freedom struggle, on the one hand, and to justify its own crimes as counter-terrorist operations. Let me now move to fake encounters. The dossier includes details of 80 major fake encounters in which more than 160 innocent persons have been martyred. 13 fake encounters were carried out by Special Operations Group, 15 by CRPF, 8 by police, 16 by Rashtriya Rifles, and 28 by other units. Now I shall uncover the reality of Indian state-directed fake encounters. In an audio conversation of October 2019, two Indian officials can be heard discussing about a certain Molana who had agreed to provide freedom fighters for fake encounter. Please listen to this clip. Sir, uh, morning, sir. Uh, sir, I am fine, sir. I am fine. One second, Molana Hussain came to sir. Yes, sir. Molana Hussain, sir, who had the money for 5,30,000 rupees. Sir, 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 we had a video that we had made on the paper, and we had signed it. We had made it with him. He said, I will give you a million dollars. You will give me a million dollars. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, sir, you will give me a little bit of a twist, sir. So, he got a capability to give us a good operation, sir. I am telling you, sir. Now, in another conversation of May 2019, a commanding officer can be heard asking to show recovery during cordon and search operations and fake encounter of a boy held in custody. Please listen to this. Sir, 
Now another example in a joint operation on 30th December 2020 Indian occupation forces and police killed three youth in Srinagar and labeled them as terrorists the slain individuals were in fact identified as locals general h sahi commander kilo force and igp igp vijay kumar had made false claims and declared them as terrorists similarly on 18th july 2020 three kashmiri youth were killed during a fake encounter at shopian and declared as pakistanis in december 2020 Indian occupation forces admitted that Captain Bhubendra of 62 Rashtriya Rifles and two civilians had deliberately killed innocent Kashmiris and planted fake weapons on them with a with a motive to grab a reward money of two million Indian rupees. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the evidence of fake recovery of arms and ammunition being presented today reflect. such false flag operations are utilized by army units to seek glory and incentives purchased weapons are usually depicted as recovered from hideouts of freedom fighters now in this conversation of june 2019 commanding officer of a unit can be heard asking for update on purchase of ak47 for which an amount of indian rupees 50000 had already been provided listen to this clip please aap samajh aa rahe hain aur ek ka kya hua sir ek ka mere clip ne jo jisse baat kiya tha sir usse abhi dobara bhi you are one year plus in front hai where is the ek ka sir ek to abhi hai to uski ke paas sir abhi wo de dijiye abhi unko paise diye hue humne tumne 50000 mange the na mange the na isi party mein baith ke बताया पड़े हैं तुम्हारे पास में ऊपर तीन महीने पहले तुमने मुझे बोला था कि सर पैसे मिलने चाहिए आई गेव यू फिफ्टी ग्रांड वॉट इज एपन टू इट यस सर अभी ट्रस्ट वर्दी अभी ऐसे दे देंगे Now, similarly, in another conversation of May 2020, Indian officers are discussing about fake hideout and placement of purchased weapons to show fake recovery of arms. Please listen. Yes, sir. Sir, Alpha Company Commander, there are two officers who are talking. Hi, sir. Yes, sir. But he, I mean, after this, that new alliance, I believe, I'm sure. वो वो अभी वो पैसा वाला नहीं बना तो वो अभी सर क्या है ना सर देखो आपको भी पता है सर उस दिन आपने भी बोला था कि तुम क्यों नहीं कुछ इनपुट निकालते सीओ ने बेटन पकड़ा और अगले दिन खबर आ गई कि साढ़े चार बजे की भाई मेरे व्यवहार में दो मिनट इन था तो वो हाइट आउट निकाल रहा है और उसके लिए पैसा ले रहा है तुम लोग क्यों निकाल सकते हो मैं सर मैं आपको फ्री में हाइड आउट दे दूंगा सर मैंने भी हाइड आउट निकाले हैं सर पहले भी सर वो गंदे से वो जेलेटिन ट्यूब डाले थे सर उसमें निकाल के हाइड आउट में पैसा लेके वेपन डालना है तो सर मैं बता रहा हूँ आपको वो आपको बता रहे होंगे ढाई लाख रुपए में एक एक मिलेगी मैं आपको पचास हजार में एक दिलवा दूंगा सर क्या बात कर दिलवा यार मैं भी इस बार सीढ़ी वाटा में कुछ कर देता सर पचास हजार Now let me talk about the Nagrota uh, fake encounter. The evidences presented abundantly illustrate that Indian false flag operations are based on fabrications. Nagrota fake encounter of 2020 is one such example of BJP RSS theatrics. Some of the inconsistencies observed also validate that it, this was a false flag operation. For example, the identities of individuals were not revealed. indicating their earlier custody from among the long list of hundreds of disappeared kashmiris secondly rusted ak47s ammunition and communication sets were shown as recovered now how is it possible that combatants were carrying rusted weapons in high security area and it was portrayed that so called miscreants infiltrated from a tunnel at samba which has been mentioned several times since 2012 
twice in 2016, and again in August and November 2020. The claim of existence of tunnel in Samba district just few meters away from the working boundary and its repeated usage for infiltration under such complex security grid is highly exaggerated. With this, I would like to conclude and would like to hand over the floor back to the foreign minister. Ladies and gentlemen, we have with us uh, Minister for Human Rights. Uh, over to you, Shireen. Thank you, Minister. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. I won't add to the data which is already in the dossier, um, except I do want to make a reference where rape was mentioned, rape cases. I want to give a particular reference, jo Kunan or Pushpura may mass rape suinti, and the case has been before the Indian courts and nothing has happened on it. And that is where rape was used as a weapon of war for the first time by the Indian security forces in the early 1990s. Um, and that case is still to be resolved. So I just want to add to it, I want to address the international community. First, the UN. UN ki Security Council ki resolution hai on uh, protecting women and children during armed conflicts. And if states do not do that, or if states indulge in violence against women, the UN is entitled to sanctions. So the question is, why is the UN not implementing those sanctions, which it's, it is itself uh, introduced through its UN Security Council resolution of women in armed conflict? Pehli baat wo. Dusra, I wanted to add, why is the UN and the international community not pushing for the India to allow special procedures mandate holders of the UN uh, Human Rights Council to uh, give, be given free access into occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Ye occupation or annexation ke kawaneen hai, conventions international including the Geneva Convention and there are specific rules of what an occupation power can do or kya wo nahi kar sakta or India has violated all those and I want to call on the UK also just the special sanctions laws banaye after they left uh, the EU uh, and why are, is the UK because of business interests not bothering to assert itself on the human rights issue. Because we say that the human rights is a central focus of Western countries' foreign policies. But if you do not apply your own principles of foreign policy uh, fairly across the board and you cherry pick that Pakistan Muslim country is to the human rights on the human rights on the human rights business so in this way the human rights on the human rights we don't say anything this means that there is no respect for human rights by these western states and I want to make a special point 2015 European Union Directed General for External Policies provided a, a, a policy paper on how European country, EU member states should uh, make policies in connection with occupation and annexation. Or usme clearly amongst the principles ek tha, that every EU member state has to give a clear-cut statement that annexation will not be recognized. Where is that statement against India after 5th August annexation attempts by India? Where is it? I want to question the EU, which is raising all sorts of human rights issues about other countries of the world. Where is your statement against annexation, which you yourself have made as a policy doctrine? Then again, EU ne sanctions lagai against what they said was illegal annexation of Crimea by Russia. Abhi tak unho ne wo sanctions ko renew ki hai, 2022 tak. Where are the sanctions against India for illegal annexation? These are questions that we need to ask. Why is there a duplicity of standards? Why is India allowed its fascist 
policies, the Hindutva policy, where it is targeting Kashmiris. And by the way, the change in demography is a war crime in an occupied territory, according to the Fourth Geneva Convention. Why has anybody taken notice? Where is the UN? Where is the European Union with its high-minded human rights uh, uh, pontification that they do towards the rest of the world? So, dekhe, is tarah nahi ho sakta ke you cherry pick EU ke iske khilaf to sanctions laga do kyunki inhone violate kiya hamari foreign policy doctrine lekin Hindustan ko karne do jo karta hai aur ab dekhe the UN Security Council is headed has been given the presidency to India at a time when the Indian government is a Hindutva fascist regime similar to Nazis in Germany. So imagine, would the UN have allowed a Nazi regime to chair the UN Security Council presidency? Would they have allowed it to have the presidency? This hypocrisy has to be exposed because we are going to get more lectures on human rights. Um, in our region from uh, our Western democratic countries. So we need to be prepared and not be defensive and say, show us your intent by implementing jo aapne khud apne liye rules or policies banai hai, implement them against India and its occupation in illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Because unless they do that, there is no credibility to their claims of human rights. And meanwhile, I also want to add, pellet guns are used for hunting animals. They're an inhumane weapon. Jo bachon ke khilaf aap use kar rahe ho, aur khawateen ke khilaf in Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Cluster bombs are banned. India or Pakistan dono ne sign ki vi hai, what is known popularly as the Inhumane Weapons Convention. India is using cluster bombs. Ye wohi India hai jisne eh, chemical weapon convention sign ki thi aur usse pehle Pakistan ke saath aapko yaad hoga under the Benazir regime they signed a bilateral chemical weapons convention and said we have destroyed all our chemical weapons. So jab chemical weapon international convention pata chali and everybody had to declare their stockpiles pata chala India has huge stockpiles of chemical weapons. Har dafa Hindustan jhoot bolta hai international community ko or international community does not get called out on its lack of response to India's illegal and rogue behavior. Now, cluster bombs are banned under the Inhumane Convention. Why is nobody raising a voice against the use of cluster bombs? And pellet guns, which are used for animals and are being used on children. Where is the human rights? Where are the voices of human rights? Why are they silent? This is the question as a Pakistani and as part of the government of Pakistan, I want to pose to the European Union, to the UN, to the US, and to the United Kingdom, who keep pontificating on human rights and how human rights are being violated in so many countries. The biggest human rights violator, the rogue state of India today, under the fascist Modi regime, is being allowed to do as it pleases. Why? And I think our media should keep asking that question, why? Why to the West? Because they keep talking to us about human rights. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I will uh, conclude by saying that um, protecting fundamental human rights is not just a responsibility of the state. There are international obli uh, obligations. There are international instruments. There are international mechanisms to ensure that they are protected. And uh, I think they should be fulfilled. And I reiterate what uh, Dr. Shireen has said, that the UN must compel India to allow access to special procedure mandate holders of the UN Human Rights Council for independent investigation of human rights violations that are uh, taking place in the Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Another point I would like to raise is that the UN Department of Peacekeeping Operations, they must make a, a, a note 
the names of individuals and units in the Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir who have been directly responsible for human rights violations. They should be identified, named, not just shamed, disallowed to be part of UN peacekeeping operations. So I will uh, uh, conclude by making a few demands. One, India to stop human rights violations of Kashmiris. Two, proceed against the perpetrators uh, who have, uh, uh, you know, who have been highlighted in this dossier. Three, put an end to demographic change. Four, lift military and digital siege. Five, release all political prisoners. And six, allow unhindered access to the UN, to the Independent Permanent Human Rights Commission of the OIC, to independent journalists, um, human rights organizations, and civil society organizations in the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Thank you. Thank you. I understand the <laughs> ministers and the NSA are available to take a couple of questions. Uh, can we have a question from the end, please, and Mr. Karatra? Thank you very much, sir. And indeed, it's an awakening for all of us that how this perpetration of human rights violation is going on. But uh, since 2014, RSS has successfully implemented its anti-Muslim, anti-minority agenda in mainland India as well as the occupied valley. Now, Nazi-inspired extremist Hindutva ideology inhibited with uh, revenge and hate, torture and terror, uh, is not a threat for the world community at large. We are talking of minority and the Muslims only. Uh, what do you think, why the world is silent and, and the world is not making a big mistake, a blunder to face in the coming decades? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, I think the world is. Uh, one has learned through history that the policy of appeasement does not work. And you see how everybody paid a huge price because the policy of appeasement was being pursued in the 30s when fascism was on the rise. This is the time. This is the time that uh, we want to jolt the uh, conscience of the world, wake them up, and tell them, act now before it's too late. Uh, you know, these policies are not just destabilizing the region, they will have far-reaching implications. Policy of appeasement will not work. Yes, uh, you have uh, interests, but then you also pontificate. You know, you believe in higher values. So if you believe in those higher values, then demonstrate and act and act now. Would like to add? I'll just say uh, one thing. Uh, we will actually take your audience again very soon to talk about this specific issue of the 1930s and what is happening now. Because it is identical. We've gone into details of looking at this. And let's be very honest. Look, a few years ago, you were asking questions. So privately, the Western world was talking about you and saying, no, you're not wrong, you're saying you're wrong. There is nobody today who behind closed doors defends what India is doing. I think we should be clear about this. Because what is happening is so egregious that there is no possibility that anybody with a straight face can tell you that what Pakistan is saying is not correct. But they also then tell you, yes, we have economic interests, there are other reasons, this and that. That is the barrier that the world will have to break, not for Pakistan's sake, but for its own sake. This is exactly how Europe talked about Hitler, and then we saw what happened. So the point is, we are clear where this is going. The region is going to be affected first, but the entire world will be affected. And we will show you data to prove that this is identical. But I, I want to put it on record that there is nobody who can now talk about India with a straight face saying that what we are saying is not correct. Everybody acknowledges it. This is a change. 
Of course, when you see planes flying over the UK and uh, Indian media talking about it as Afghanistan, heads hang in shame. That's all somebody can do. Thank you. Can we have a question from uh, the gentleman here in the <coughs> second row? Uh, Adil Abbasi from Airway. Uh, NSA Mohit Yusuf, sir. Uh, this question is to you that uh, though it is not directly related to uh, this subject, uh, today's subject, Indian role in Afghanistan is fully exposed in uh, um, uh, tw uh, for 20 years now. It has been, uh, we have seen that they have abetting terrorism inside Afghanistan, but also uh, Pakistan. We know that, and we have discussed this number of times here in Pakistan and outside Pakistan, but world not taking it seriously. Why? I just want to know this fact. Because it's been almost 20 years we are raising this issue, Afghanistan and Kashmir. Uh, world silence, uh, we have seen. Uh, now it has commenced uh, disinfo campaign to misguide the world about Pakistan's role in India. It has lied to the world about real situation in uh, Indian-occupied Kashmir by sending MEPs from EU and several other tactics. Why there is no condemnation of such brutal state hypocrisy yet? Look, I disagree with you a little bit. These things are not overnight. We know what interests of India are with the world. This counterweight to China is another bogey. Just look at what is happening inside India. Look at the power that China wields. Uh, it's laughable to think that <laughs> this country can be a counterweight uh, except uh, unto itself. But it is what it is. What I have just said, and I'll repeat again, there is clear uh, shift in what the world thinks about India. I'm not taking any credit for ourselves. India is doing what it's doing uh, inside India, and the world is seeing that. This EU Disinfo Lab report that you mentioned catalogs 15 years of a fake news network against Pakistan in 114 countries. Why didn't they reveal it before? When Pakistan started talking about these issues publicly, and this is a change that we have made, they keep me jab se ye baat kar raho, foreign minister kar rahe, hum sab kar rahe. And this is a change from previous governments. This is not a political statement. We have nothing to hide. Koi reason nahi hai jiski wajah se main dunia ke saamne baith ke ye na batau ke mera dushman mere khilaf aur puri region ke khilaf kya kar raha hai. Jo bhi reason tha pehle ye baat Pakistan nahi karta tha. Ab hum do tok alfaz mein ye baat kar raha hai and the world is responding. Yes, they are not responding the way they should given what is happening in India. Yehi cheez agar kahi aur ho rahi hoti to abhi yahan pe but I'm telling you, they cannot with a straight face respond to what we tell them. Remember, we put out a dossier in October 2020. Publicly, obviously, nobody said anything. But there is not a single comment that has come back to us saying that we challenge a fact in what Pakistan has presented. So this is changing. Inshallah, you will see this change as it is they are exposed. If you look at India and media, so Laktai Delhi has fallen, um, you know. And so at the end of the day, these things do matter. They're, it's not going to be overnight, but Pakistan will continue presenting evidence that will show what the real India is and how it's a threat to the world. Thank you. Can we have a question from uh, the right side at the back, and the lady at the back? Thank you very much. Uh, my question is on all three of you. Uh, you spoke about UN as well, and you spoke about the atrocities as well, and women rights are very much there. The violation is very much there with evidence, stern evidence. Uh, Foreign Minister, uh, Pakistan has locus standi on Kashmir as well. We have numerous resolutions passed by UN on Kashmir, Kashmiri's uh, self, uh, right to self-determination. Then what is keeping uh, UN away from uh, obliging all these uh, 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 resolutions on Kashmir? And uh, do we get anything from UN as response that what is keeping them away from all those implementations? And why they can't do anything to liberate Kashmir, IIOJK, if, if we speak about that in particular, like East Timor and South Sudan. We have precedences already. So what, I, I would like to know that behind closed doors, what is the response from UN in that regard? Thank you very much. Uh, let us uh, 
look at things realistically. This issue is not new. It's been there for over seven decades. But there's a new focus that our government has put on this issue. It was put on the back burner for years. But now, we have highlighted it at every forum. Uh, since the 5th of August 2019, the issue of Jammu and Kashmir, the dispute of Jammu and Kashmir, has been taken up and discussed at uh, the Security Council. Indian claim was that this is an internal matter of India. And why is it being discussed there? But that was negated, that was rejected. Uh, the Secretary General of the UN was here in Islamabad, and uh, perhaps you were present in the press conference. The position he took, he reiterated the UN position. Uh, the President of the General Assembly was here in Islamabad, and he clearly uh, uh, spelt out what the clear position is. Now, we are pursuing uh, what we think is the right thing to do. I think uh, we have a strong legal case. Uh, uh, Kashmiris were promised uh, a plebiscite, uh, and uh, that is not being the right to self-determination, is being denied. We will continue to do what we ought to do. Fortunately, uh, there is, uh, well, we could have achieved more. More could have been done. But let's not forget that a number of things have happened that did not happen in the past. For example, the two reports produced by the Human Rights Commissioner uh, in June 2018 and July 2019. Now, these are very, very authentic and very credible reports. The fact that the uh, Human Rights Council, you know, in December 2020 has sent six communications uh, to India, you know, uh, uh, you know, through their special reporters to be given access, you know, they've been denied. But it is changing. It is changing. The fact that two resolutions have been moved in the U.S. Congress, you know, uh, for lifting of uh, sanctions, uh, you know, uh, you know, sanctions that have been imposed by the Indian occupation forces. The fact that uh, you know, 85 uh, congressmen have, you know, in the last, uh, you know, a couple of years, raised this issue. The House of Commons has debated it. Uh, it is building up. Obviously, at times. Uh, international players uh, prefer political expediency uh, and overlook things. But we will continue to do what we think is right. Uh, one day, I am confident, one day the, uh, the, the oppressors will be held accountable. I just wanted to add yeah. the one second. Also, I think that Pakistan is now also studying other options beyond the traditional diplomacy of the UN and the Human Rights Council, because there are a number of options now available to us with uh, the European Union, as I pointed out, with their foreign policy paper. So that is something we need to take up more aggressively, and I'm sure we will be doing. There are options also of seeking a UN uh, General Assembly resolution for an advisory opinion from the ICJ on the demographic and uh, changes and annexation because the ICJ already has set a precedence because it gave an advisory opinion which the General Assembly requested on the illegal wall that uh, Israel built. And they said that any change in an occupied territory is a war crime. So that precedent has, uh, has been set in the advisory opinion by the ICJ. So if we can get a resolution in the UN General Assembly, the ICJ can't suddenly do a double take and go back on that. So that would have a lot of impact. So there are a lot of other options now that Pakistan has, because the world, as Mohit pointed out, no one in the world now says that 
what India is doing is right, what India claims is right. No, they know it's wrong. And yes, every country has its vital national interests. But at the end of the day, if they keep making human rights especially central to their policies, then it increases the chances of pushing for India to be sanctioned and for the pressure therefore on the UN also, including its five permanent members because we have this veto that hangs there. Uh, but what I think that other than what states can do, in our media, the international media, human rights organizations should call into question why India is being given legitimacy at the UN Security Council. I mean, these are the questions that the non-state actors, the media, should be raising also. Don't just leave it to the governments to do things. Thank you. Can we have a question from the gentleman at the back, in the middle row? Yes. Assalamu alaikum, Foreign Minister, Ministers, NSA. A Farooq Patafi here. Yeah. I wanted to be clear. All right. Uh, I wanted to actually ask about bare minimum. While you were giving this very pithy presentation, I was just looking at it, uh, and the numbers that stood up, especially about enforced disappearances, uh, was humongous. Eight to ten thousand people uh, have been uh, are di uh, have disappeared, and uh, nobody knows their status. And their wives are now uh, called half widows. Uh, in that state of affairs, and this is perhaps only documented number. There might be more people who are missing, and the, uh, uh, everything has accelerated because of uh, Narendra Modi. Uh, the question about bare minimum is, where can the Kashmiris go? Which uh, international humanitarian organization or body can they approach just to uh, compel India to reveal the status of these men who have been taken in? Because we don't know whether they are alive, whether they're dead, at least their family should have some kind of closure. So this is my question. Thank you very much. Any international organization can question the Indian government itself because they're the ones doing the disappearances, picking up people like that. And I think if governments uh, and parliaments of different countries put the question to the Indians and they need to demand an answer because at the end of the day, the Indian state would have all the figures. They know who has disappeared. So countries and human rights organizations need to target the Indian government to get the data from them because nobody else will have access to the data because those responsible for the actions will have the data also. Or Pitafi sahab, uh, I'll just add to that. I understand that the Human Rights Council ka forum is a big bawakar forum. Hai. और उसे भी इंगेज किया जा सकता है वहां जाया जा सकता है वहां जाया जाना चाहिए और हमें और भी देखने की जरूरत है कि और कौन से मैकेनिज्म्स इंटरनेशनल मैकेनिज्म्स अवेलेबल हैं जिनको बरोकार लाया जा सके शायद आपको याद हो कि ईयू डिसइंफो लैब में एक पहलू उसका यह था कि हिंदुस्तान ने जाली एनजीओज रजिस्टर की हुई थी एक्रेडिटेड एनजीओज की जगह तो एक पूरा प्रोसेस है जहां एक्रेडिटेड एनजीओज भी जाके बोलती हैं इन फोरम्स में वो भी यही चीज उठाती उनके थ्रू भी हो सकता है अनफॉर्चूनेटली व्हाट द इंडियंस हैड डन वाज पुट कैनिंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड बिस्किट मेकिंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एज एक्रेडिटेड एनजीओज दैट्स व्हाट फैशिस्ट गवर्नमेंट्स डू I think as the foreign minister has said, uh, specifically with regard to the Human Rights Council, there is a working group on involuntary and enforced disappearances, which mm. can specifically be uh, asked to investigate. Uh, can we have a question from the first row, uh, Madam? Thank you so much. Uh, I have actually two questions. I am trying to club them uh, in one. My first question is for uh, Ms. Uh, Foreign Minister and then uh, uh, for National Security Advisor. Uh, for National Security Advisor, I will uh, put up my question first. Uh, since India is signatory of so many um, conventions for not using uh, 
uh, web, uh, use of chemical uh, weapon and then uh, cluster bombs and pallet gun because uh, World Health Organization has categorically declared it's illegal and can't be used it in any war or conflict or chaotic situation. But India used it up, uh, not only for men but on uh, two years old toddler. He by nine years old, Ayan, like uh, no parents can sleep after uh, this fear. Uh, so what uh, actually is stopping the world to talk about uh, the use of chemical weapon and the uh, cluster bombs on children and uh, human beings? And my uh, second question is for Minister. Um, sir, first Ban Ki-moon, then uh, Antonio Guterres, but no one is actually uh, talking about the violation of Kashmiri uh, genocide. Uh, I don't know what's stopping them to uh, take this case up to the world. And, and uh, world hum humanitarian organizations uh, uh, even not talking about the violation and uh, clear and uh, loud genocide of innocent Kashmiri since uh, Debbie Abraham, UK parliamentarian, she led a delegation uh, to Delhi. Uh, she wanted to have the access of Indian occupied Kashmir, but she was denied and then she uh, approached Pakistan. The very next morning she um, uh, uh, flew uh, here. Uh, I, I'm just uh, thinking, uh, since we cannot see such atrocities and brutalities by uh, Indian forces on Kashmiris, then what stops uh, humanitarian organizations and then UN and then world superpowers to talk about it? Uh, do you think will they ever take action against Indian forces? Because I am more concerned about the brutalities uh, of Indian Thank forces. You. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, ये तो सवाल भी था और आपके कमेंट्स भी थे और बड़े वैलिड थे देखिए बात ये है कि अभी आपने डेबी का जिक्र किया हिंदुस्तान ने इनको डिनाई किया एक्सेस नहीं दिया हमने क्या किया हमने उनको एक्सेस दिया वो यहाँ आए उनको मकबूल आज़ाद कश्मीर लेकर गए वो लोगों से मिले दिस इन इट सेल्फ वॉज ए ह्यूज डेमोस्ट्रेशन ऑफ द डिफरेंस ऑफ अप्रोच an attitude towards human beings and individuals, the way they were being treated. We had nothing to hide. Uh, we said, aye. Uh, they said that we want to come here. First, our idea was that we keep reciprocity in front of us. We said, okay, if they don't give us, we are ready to give them. Come and see. Look, in this world where uh, media plays a significant role in the formulation of public opinion. I think uh, uh, this uh, institution has to be used more effectively uh, than before. And you will see that post 5th August 2019, the, the, the international media, which was generally, you know, very numb and quiet about uh, the situation in Indian occupied Kashmir has spoken up. Aap dekhi, bhoat se articles aaya hai, New York Times me aaya hai, New Yorker me aaya hai, Washington Post me aaya hai, jino ne logo ko dehlaya hai, logo ki tawajjo mafzool karwai hai, that this is happening. Ab, sirf uh, print or electronic media nahi hai, social media. Uh, की जो खबर आती है और उसका जो इम्पैक्ट होता है और जिस तरह वो वायरल होती है इट इफेक्ट्स गवर्नमेंट्स एंड यू नो पब्लिक ओपिनियंस जब आप देखते हैं कोई कोई एक uh, ऐसा सीन जो कवर होता है चाहे वो ऑफिशियल मीडिया ना भी कर रहा हो एक सिटीजन कर रहा हो तो वो भी अटेंशन uh, सीक कर लेता है और उससे पब्लिक ओपिनियन जब बदलती है तो कम से कम डेमोक्रेसीज में ये तो की जाती है या की जानी चाहिए कि इट विल हैव एन इम्पैक्ट स्पेशली पब्लिक रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स हमारी अब कोशिश ये है कि हम बदकिस्मती से ये 
दो साल कोविड की इन्वायरमेंट रही है और आपको पता है कि कोविड के इन्वायरमेंट में ट्रैवल करना कितना मुश्किल था हमारी एक हमने स्ट्रैटी बनाई थी प्लान भी बनाया था कि किस तरह हम पार्लियामेंट्री डिप्लोमेसी को इस्तेमाल करें और लोगों तक रसाई हासिल करें बदकस्मती से हम कर नहीं पाए इसलिए नहीं कर पाए बिकॉज ऑफ यू नो अभी भी रेड लिस्ट है कभी कुछ कहीं पाबंदी है कहीं पाबंदी है आपको आसानी से दस्याबी होती नहीं है पर इन इट विल चेंज एंड मैं समझता हूँ आपकी मदद से ये पब्लिक ओपिनियन पलटेगी हिंदुस्तान का वो जो था ना वो जो वो जो शाइनिंग इंडिया का जो इमेज था वो अब नहीं रहा सच्ची बात है वो दुनिया में नहीं वो हिंदुस्तान में नहीं रहा आज हिंदुस्तान के अंदर एक बहुत बड़ा तबका पैदा हो गया है जो कहता है कि इस सरकार ने इस बीजेपी सरकार ने जितना हमें और हमारे कश्मीर के इशू को जितना इन्होंने नुकसान पहुंचाया है और जितना कश्मीरियों को इन्होंने एलियनेट किया है कभी ना थे वो कश्मीरी जो माजी में उनके लिए एक थोड़ा सा एक नरम गोशा रखते थे वो हुकूमतों का हिस्सा बनते थे आज जब उनको दिल्ली बुलाया गया एक बैठक हुई ना अभी रिसेंटली हुई वजीर अजम ने बुलाया लेकिन उन्होंने क्या कहा उन्होंने कहा जी सब कुछ ठीक है लेकिन हमारा हमारा स्टेटहुड का क्या बनेगा हमारे तशखस का क्या बनेगा तो ये एक गैप है जो आ रहा है और एक बहुत बड़ी ओपिनियन है विद इन इंडिया जो अब जाग रही है और आ, कह रही है कि ये ये जो रवैया है ये दुरुस्त नहीं है और आपने जैसे अभी आ, इसी रिपोर्ट पे जिक्र किया गया कि आ, जो उनके मिनिस्टर ऑफ एक्सटर्नल अफेयर्स थे जसवंत जसवंत सिन्हा ने नौ रिपोर्ट्स लिखी हैं अब ये कोई मामूली शख्सियत नहीं है मतलब एक, एक नामी गरामी शख्सियत है उनका एक अपना वजन है तो वो जाते हैं और रिपोर्ट लिखते हैं तो इट इज हैपनिंग इट इज चेंजिंग वी हैव टू प्रसो इट और मैं समझता हूँ कि जो कुर्बानियाँ हैं कश्मीरियों की बिलखसूस और जो यकजहती और यकसुई है पाकिस्तानियों की इन शालात बदलेंगे सर ये डोजियर आलमी बरदरी के साथ किस किस फोरम पर शेयर किया जा रहा है सर देखिए हमने मैंने अर्ज किया ना कि हमने इसकी कॉपीज भी प्रिंट करवाई हैं हम तो ये कॉपीज जो हैं जितने अपने मिशंस हैं हम उनको भी भिजवा रहे हैं ठीक और इसमें हमने सीडीज जो है और फिर हमने कहा ना आप खुद इसको वेबसाइट पे खुद इसको अपलोड कर सकते हैं खुद देख सकते हैं तो ये तो जितनी डिसमिनेशन है वो हमें करनी चाहिए हर फोरम पर हम भिजवाएंगे और हर जगह भिजवाएंगे हमने आपने देखा पिछला जब डोजियर था हमने पी फाइव के जो यहाँ एम्बेसडर्स हैं उनको बुला के उनसे भी शेयर किया था और उनको भी हमने डिसमिनेट किया था अकवा मुतहद के फोरम पर भी हमने उसको सर्कुलेट किया था तो हम हर जरिया इस्तेमाल करेंगे ताकि इसकी ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा सर्कुलेशन हो सके और इसको लोग देखकर अपनी राय खुद कायम करें और जो चीज़ें छुपाई जा रही हैं उनको बेनकाब करें देखिए बहुत से लोग हो सकते हैं वो शायद खामोश इसलिए हों कि उन तक पूरी इन्फॉर्मेशन की रसाई नहीं है इसके ज़रिए आपने उनको रसाई पहुँचाने की कोशिश की है और मुझे यकीन है कि इन शो इसको इस्तेमाल करते हुए इस जो उनकी हक के खुद इरादियत की तहरीक है उसको जिला बख्शेंगे थैंक यू मैं एक चीज़ सिर्फ इसमें ऐड कर दूँ एंड में कि मेरी दरख्वास्त होगी हम सब की कि याद रखिए कि ये दोसियर और इसकी टाइमिंग ट्रिब्यूट है गिलानी साहब के लिए उनकी सारी ज़िंदगी इस मकसद के लिए गुजरी लेकिन अभी भी ये जिद्दोजहद जारी है और हमने इसको पाया तकमील तक पहुंचाना है तो आप जो बात भी कीजिए मेरी दरख्वास्त होगी कि गिलानी साहब को याद रखिए ये सारा ट्रिब्यूट है उनके लिए जितना काम हो रहा है और आगे भी जो काम होगा इसमें बिल्कुल इस बात को आगे बढ़ाते हुए देखिए उन्होंने हिंदुस्तानियों ने जनाजा नहीं होने दिया लेकिन पाकिस्तान में हर शहर में उनका जनाजा ऐबाना हुआ लोगों ने उसमें पार्टिसिपेट किया आ, उन्होंने इस चीज़ को दबाए रखा और दबाया रख रखे आ, उन्होंने रखा तो उनकी आ, उस वाक्य को देखते हुए हमने 
मेहनत से और कम ही वक्त में ये चीज़ तैयार करके हम दुनिया के सामने लाए हैं कि तस्वीर का एक वो रुख है जो दुनिया को दिखाना चाहते हैं और असली चेहरा ये है जो हम दिखाना चाहते हैं थैंक यू